Okay, so we have some tips here for rescaling edit, but in particular in how to take a, a widescreen edit down to a, a 4.3 standard definition edit in Final Cut Pro 10. And there are two options here really. One is to set your edit up in 4.3 and standard definition, and the other is to actually convert an edit into standard definition. So um, we're going to run through the conversion first and then look at how you would um, set up a new edit. So we have a, a quick edit here that we're going to work on. Okay, and you can see that if we come up to our projects panel here and highlight this project, you can tell it's a project by the clapperboard symbol up at the top here. Okay, so if we highlight this and we can see on the right hand side that we have a 1920 by 1080 edit and it's in 29.97 frames per second. Okay, and we're going to go in um, with this selected here and go to modify settings. Okay, so we want to change this to a standard definition edit. So we're going to drop this down to NTSC SD and we have a couple of options here. Um, we have standard definition uh, DV or standard definition DV is an anamorphic um, setup. Okay, so we're going to select 720 by 480, which is the kind of standard setup. Okay, we'll leave the frame rate at 29.97. Now, we might want to change this if we know that we're going to project it from a computer screen um, to progressive. Okay, so if it's going to go to television, then we want to leave it as interlace. That's the standard format for NTSC stand definition. But if we know that it's going to be 720 by 480 and displayed on a computer screen, then we would leave it at progressive. Okay, we'll leave it as is for the moment. We can change this at a later stage. So let's leave the audio settings at the moment. That's not going to affect anything uh, that we're working on visually and click OK. Okay, now if we come back to our footage, you can see that our footage now is letterbox. So we have a black line at the top and the bottom of the clips. So there are a couple of options here once you've rescaled um, an edit in terms of how you want your footage to appear. One is that it will have this letterbox around it and the other is that we rescale the footage um, to fill the screen. There's a nice quick way of dealing with your clips as you do this and one of those is to use the copy function and then the paste attributes function. Okay, So we want to remove for instance the letterbox from all of these clips Okay, we want to do it all in one go. So we're going to highlight one clip. We're going to come to our transform tools up here. And we're going to make sure we're using transform rather than crop. And then we'll rescale this footage so that it fills the screen. And you can see it snapping to the edge there. And I can relocate it so some footage you might need to relocate so that the, the subject is framed. And sometimes when I'm doing this, I like to drop down the, the zoom so that I can see the edge of the clip and just make sure that we're not leaving any black edges over the edge there. Okay, so we've rescaled that one clip and now we're gonna go to that clip on the timeline, go to edit, copy or command and C, and then select all the other clips on our timeline, just these two. And then we're gonna go to, let's just move the playhead so we can see this happening. We're gonna go to edit and paste attributes, where here you can see we can paste all these attributes for the video. So we've got the option for transform, position, rotation, scale, etc., and when we paste these, it's going to rescale all those clips on the timeline. Okay, so whether we've got three clips or 50 clips, this is a really useful function when we're rescaling an edit. Okay, so that's one option for rescaling a footage to a, a different resolution. And this would work if you were upscaling uh, clips as well. You just need to bear in mind that if your footage is standard definition, um, then you may want to consider the quality of that footage as you scale it up. So it will lose quality if you're scaling 720 by 480 DV footage to 1920, you will lose some quality. Okay, so let's just click done here. Okay, and now we're going to come and create a new project. So let's go to file, new and project. And here we're going to go into the, the custom settings. So we're going to just call this project 43 test. We'll leave it in the same Calvados event, and then we'll click Use Custom Settings here. Okay, and you can see here we've got some options. So normally you want to set your video properties on your your first video clip. Okay, that avoids um, any rescaling or rendering of the footage. Certainly, if you're working with footage and 
you're editing it at a different resolution, then Final Cut has to do some work to actually change the scale of it when it does its background rendering. So you may find that things slow down, particularly if you're scaling things up. Um, so we'll click Custom here, select NTSC SD. If you're working in the UK, um, then you might want to select Power SD. That would be the standard definition format here. And then we'll stick with 720 by 480 DV. And for this instance, we'll select 29.97 progressive. Now, the frame rate, you can change it um, here, but it's best to stick with the frame rate of your footage. Um, otherwise, you're making Final Cut do a little bit more work and you will lose some quality, um, some flow in the footage when you're actually editing it. Okay, And we'll click Use Default Settings for Audio, click OK. And you can see now that we have um, a project that pops up here. We can highlight it and see that it's set up in standard definition. So this will play back nicely on a standard definition television um, or on a projector that you're playing stuff back on. OK, so that's a quick overview of how to set up um, a 4.3 edit in Final Cut Pro 10, but also how to change a format from one scale to another using the copy and paste attributes function to actually speed up that process. If you have any questions about Final Cut Pro 10, I'm happy to answer them. Just send me an email, design at benhousel.com or send me a tweet at benhousel. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have about setting up projects in Final Cut or about editing in Final Cut Pro 10 or Final Cut Pro 7. Thanks a lot.